Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What's the Everybody procedure, stay calm. What's the procedure? Stay calm! Wait, 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 wait! Everybody just calm down! Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG. I'm your host, Aaron. And for today's video, we're headed to the world of Diablo 4 once again. The embargo has been lifted and you've seen been seeing videos and news articles and lots of Diablo stuff come out today. Now you really can't show gameplay, you can't make build guides, you can't go through that, but you can at least talk about your experience. So for this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the new leaked date and I've made multiple videos on Diablo 4 release date. I feel like this one is fairly definitive, okay? And then we're gonna watch an eight minute video on IGN breaking down their experience with D4. Now, I'm not a fan of IGN. I put them pretty low on the list, but they probably had the game for a long time, so we're gonna see what they have to say. So that's the plan. D4 release date leaks online. According to a recent data mine, Diablo 4 is set to release on June 5th, 2023, or June 6th, depending on the region. This information comes after several rumors and leaks have indicated Diablo 4 would be at the Game Awards, suggesting fans will get the official announcement soon. Now here, well, I guess on my Twitch, here in Action RPG, we will be streaming the game awards live. We always do it. We play a game called Pass or Play. We have a few drinks, have a few snacks. It's always a good time. So if you want to watch the game awards, have a little bit of fun, check out my Twitch. It's in the description. So here's the leak. This release date leaks come from reliable source Luma, who has determined or has uh, data mined similar information from the Microsoft Store in the past. According to Luma, the game also clocks in with a file size of 80 gigabytes on Xbox. It will also reportedly have a standard edition, digital edition, and ultimate edition, which is not surprising for a game and it's in the current industry. Despite the trustworthiness of this source, the release date should be taken with a grain of salt until the Diablo 4 developer confirms in another way, which again will be at, or at least hopefully at, the Game Awards tomorrow. So that's what it is. That's like an easy way to find release dates as people just mine the information from the Microsoft Store. And there you go, June 5th. So everybody was saying April and then it came out. Oh, the range is actually April to June. And it looks like per this rumor, end of June or beginning of June is when we're actually going to get the game. OK. So that's the leaked information. Now let's go over to IGN. Let me move. Go a little smaller. And what we're going to do now is we're going to watch eight minute breakdown from IGN on D4. Just so you know, I have not watched this yet. So if it's horrible, I apologize. Let's do it. It's rare for a game to come along that I can't stop thinking about even when I'm not playing it. There are plenty of great games out there, don't get me wrong, but a precious few keep running in my head even after I've walked away from my PC. As you've probably guessed by now, I can't stop thinking about Diablo 4. Even in its current unfinished state, Blizzard wouldn't let us capture our own gameplay footage, likely due to the placeholder audio in my build and other normal in-development stuff that doesn't make for a pretty video, so you're looking at B-roll they put together for us here. Diablo 4 is absolutely crammed with story, content, beauty, character customization, and so much more. I played roughly 12 hours of Act 1, bringing my Barbarian from a barely clothed level 1 bodybuilder to Ripped. a decked out, blunt force, trauma inducing level 25 powerhouse by the time I reached the end of this build's content. <laughs> One of the first things that struck me in the first couple hours of Diablo 4 was just how much story there is. Relative to previous games in the series, you'll spend a lot of time watching cutscenes of both the cinematic and in-game variety. The former are, per Blizzard tradition, always gorgeous, and the latter are impressively varied in both camera angle and length. If I'm being honest, I think the frequency of the cutscenes in the early game combined with the unavoidably lousy feeling of being at the lowest point on the power curve when you're just starting out makes Diablo 4 feel a bit slow for the first hour or two. <laughs> this isn't really a complaint though, as I applaud Blizzard's effort to layer more story into Sanctuary. 
Making it feel more alive and filled with more history is a good thing. Besides, you'll still spend an overwhelming amount of your time slaying monsters in combat. As you've heard by now, Diablo 4 is more open world than ever and Blizzard's implementation works well. Sure, you can wander anywhere you want, but regions outside of where you're supposed to be in Act 1 are at a significantly higher level, enough to crush you like a bug for roaming into lands you're not yet welcome in. Interesting. For context, the regions you... Now that's really interesting because what we've heard in the past is that this is open world, make your own story, you can go left, right, center, but there's always going to be a way that guides you back to your path. And from what IGN just said is that that's not the case. You're going to be on a path and if you ever go off the path, which you can do because it's open world, you're going to get shredded because those are going to be higher area zones. So even though you can, there would never be a reason for you to actually do that you visit in Act 1 look to be a noticeably small portion of the total landmass of Sanctuary. But you are heartily encouraged to explore the areas you do belong in, as you'll earn renown for discovering new areas, picking up and completing side quests, and more. The more renown you tally, the better the tangible rewards get, notably in the form of skill points. Furthermore, as you level up, you'll be able to do things like visit the Alchemist to improve your health potion's healing ability. Exploring both towns and the open fields of combat alike will yield frequent blue exclamation marks on your map, designating another side quest. The layers here run both wide and deep, again making Diablo 4 feel like an extremely content-rich experience. Speaking of insane layers of content, the skill tree is bonkers in this game in the best of ways. It snakes along, sprouting hub and spoke clusters, with each hub along the way offering between four to eight choices, some of which are either or picks. I'm sad I don't have footage of my own barbarian build to share, but as is my preference in Diablo games, my goal is to be able to deliver the maximum amount of pure pain at any given moment. I dumped several points into Bash, my concussion-inducing, fury-generating secondary attack, while going with the bleed-inducing Flay as my primary attack, and adding Whirlwind, Leap, and Death Blow as my three special abilities, and then Wrath of the Berserker as my ultimate, which I unlocked near the end of my time with this preview version. Meanwhile, you can respec anytime you want for a reasonable fee of in-game gold. I only ended up undoing one point near level 25 in order to pick a different branch of the skill tree to spend my action point on. Sadly, I have no footage of any of this to show you, but alas. The heart of any Diablo game, though, is of course the way you utilize your skill point choices. My general strategy, depending on what I was fighting, was to go after the most annoying and or dangerous bad guy in the mob first, blunting him with my bash attack until he got stunned, allowing me to switch to my primary attack and slash his life bar down to zero. Anyone causing me problems from range had their personal space rudely invaded by my leap attack, which I also put several skill points into because of its usefulness. Oh, and the sadistic joy it brought me to watch my foes get crushed underneath my feet as the ground all around me caved in upon landing. On this note, I should compliment how beautiful Diablo 4 looks. It's got delectable lighting and delightfully violent effects. And using all of your attacks within one battle, as you'll need to do quite frequently before too long, makes Diablo 4 look like a demon-slaying orchestral performance that you get to conduct. As I carved up Hell's minions, well, except for the times where they carved me up, my time traversing Sanctuary never got old. Not just because of the surplus of side quests that frequently popped up, heck, even some of the random dungeons with no side quests attached to them were so big that they took me roughly half an hour to clean out, but also the seemingly random in-game events, both public and private. I rarely saw any other players due to the relatively small group of people playing this preview build, but you will, and that means you're likely to have an easier go of those public events than I did. 
I held my own in most cases, though I do confess to getting beat down mercilessly by the Stronghold event. Blessed are you who will die in the Mother's name. It's a multi-step torture chamber that ended in me getting smote by the final boss of that encounter. I'd meant to come back later after leveling up a bit more, but sadly I ran out of time. Ultimately, Diablo 4 feels like a massively plussed up version of Diablo 2, which is the best case scenario for it in my book. Not that it ignores Diablo 3, there are clear notes taken from the best of that game too, but tonally and artistically, it leans more heavily into the Diablo 2 playbook. Regardless, this is going to be a huge game by any definition. The initial campaign projects out to about 50 hours based on my time with Act 1, plus the endgame stuff that Blizzard is specifically focused on that we haven't even seen yet, the opportunities to play as different classes and roll different builds within the same class, and the development team's promise to keep feeding the community new content for years to come. Heaven help any game that ships anywhere near Diablo 4, because I know I'll be too absorbed in my adventures in Sanctuary to care about anything else. For more on Diablo 4, wow. don't miss the original announcement trailer from BlizzCon. Wow. It's funny what he just said there at the end. Like, that's what we're always talking about is Last Epoch. Like, Last Epoch's multiplayer comes in March. Now, that being said, this was supposed to come in April, or that's what the rumor was. So at least we've got three months for Ellie to build a player base with multiplayer before Diablo 4 sucks the air out of the room. So that's the video. I will say watching that video, I feel like I didn't really learn anything new. Obviously, I've been following all the news since Diablo 4 has even been announced. Been watching all the videos, all the developers, producer and everything. Watched all the leak footage. So for the most part, I feel like I am pretty set for this game. Game Awards tomorrow. Come check out my Twitch. It's going to be a really fun time to ask at the end of this video. Ask number one. I'm hoping today is the day I have earned your subscription. Hoping today is the day you make the decision to push that little red button. I would really appreciate it. Wife, four kids, full time job, full time YouTube. Still making a video a day. I'm hoping today push that red button. Ask number two. Check out my Patreon. Thank you to the first 52 members that have signed up. Become an instant ARPG VIP and get Patreon exclusive content at the first link in the description. Weekly blog post, weekly podcast, access to the VIP lounge so you can chit chat with me every day. Special title, chance to win custom merch. Lots of goodies depending on where you sign up at. Again, first link in the description. That's all I've got. D4 in June. Hopefully you're entertained or at least learn something. Aaron, out. Mm -hmm.